We're now going to hear from our opening storyteller. Each year we begin with a story. Oops, stop my thing. Because stories remind us why we're here and give us a way to enter the day together. Our first storyteller is Sarah. Sarah spends much of her life horizontal and once posted a sun lounger to St. Martin in the fields so she could be a delegate at opening the roof, our first conference in 2012. Sarah enjoys studying with Sarum College and has been exploring disability theology since discovering Nancy Iceland in 2010. She has learned to be creative with limited energy and has found life opened up by Zoom. I ask people to leave a space between sentences so I can take it in. I need a space between things to let them breathe. I've realised that I'm not important and that's a good thing. I'm not the centre of the universe and that's incredibly liberating. It's not all down to me. Being on the periphery can be a good thing. It's like the difference between when I was out in the world. You know, when you're trying to change the world and you think it's all on you. And then you realise it's about being part of a community. The very first time I came to the conference in person, I remember the excitement, the recognition of finding other people who understood disability of what it was like to be disabled in church. So you're not having to constantly explain yourself to non-disabled people or justify your existence. There are so much more interesting conversations to be had. And it's so wonderful to be able to be part of it again. I wasn't able to come for some time. Uh, My world got smaller as my health deteriorated. It became very, very local. It began with not being able to travel to London, but I could still go to church. Then I couldn't get to the church or the front garden. (laughs) I have to meet God here because I'm never anywhere else. I remember going to a parish quiet day when I could still travel. It made me laugh because the quiet day was a lot noisier than my normal life. I've become an involuntary hermit, trying to work out how to do church things without being able to get to church like an accidental anchoress I became very attached to the daily offices because I could imagine people praying at the same time as me chanting psalms creating entire (laughs) holy week liturgies in my bed using common worship and crosses
but it was on my own a lot of the time. And then the pandemic happened, and it was as though everyone came to join me. With all the Zoom things, it was like the world opened up to me. I love Zoom so much. <laughs> For years, when I wasn't well enough to read the words of the office, I used to wish there was someone who could read them to me. And now every morning, I have a group of people reading the office with me on squares on the screen glowing like icons and I could join the conference again last year because it was on Zoom There's so much joy in the conference. Sometimes I feel like I'm riding on a wave even though I'm utterly exhausted. I remember the first conference, something that Claire Herbert said after seeing us all resting about the atmosphere of peace and calm. It was lunchtime, we were all lying down quiet in the chapel and she was struck by how it altered her perception of time. It was one of the few places I've come across where I didn't have to leave a part of myself at the door like a pair of dirty boots. It can seem a little unreal now when I travelled all that way. <laughs> but I found a photo of the conference from 2014. It was Proof I was there, you can only see my knee, but it's my knee. I still remember listening to John Holt speak that year. He'd been talking about disabled people as an oppressed group, and just as the Eucharistic bread is broken so it can be shared, he said that phrase about us. Our bodies are broken so our lives can be shared. And there was such a strong sense in the room, like a collective <gasps> gasp. It was amazing. <laughs> I went up afterwards and hugged him and talked to him about Luke 14. It was a wonderful man. After the monthly Zoom coffees we started having in the last year, I always feel so much more human. It's restorative. Sometimes it's easier to recognise the worth in other people than it is in yourself. But of course, you can see that you're like them, and so it gets reflected back somehow. It's a reminder that there is worth in us, that our lives have value. It's something that I thought the church could be good at. A reminder that our lives have value, but somehow it doesn't necessarily happen. But these coffee gatherings, having our worth reflected in each other, mirrored, it's such a good thing. Hearing others' voices, voices that speak truth, and it's scary, saying anything is scary. Somehow we're safer if we're quiet and hide, it's easier not to draw attention to ourselves. And I have been there when I've been able to speak at all, and that's fine. 
I used to be more able to speak, but I think when thinking is harder and speaking is harder, it gets harder to express myself. But I always think the resurrected Christ must have been exhausted. 